What's up everyone? Today we have this. It's the Nespresso Ascenza Mini. It's a, a Bravel machine uh, that makes Nespresso capsules. So, it doesn't say it out here, but that, oh yeah, here it is. Ascenza Mini Black. So, let's see what we get in the box. Oh, so that's what it is. Box in a box type of situation. There it is, the proper presentation. Comes looks like it comes with 14 capsules for free. Here's all the different kinds you can order. And I'm not sure what that means. Here's the drip tray, very small. <clears throat> Here is what looks to be the Yep, here's the free capsule. What's the expiration date? Best before May 30, it looks like, yeah, May 31st, 2023. So, uh, it's not expired yet. <clears throat> Here's the machine itself. A very small machine, as I would like. this oh isn't that where it catches all the used capsules what's that are you supposed to peel this off I guess so all right, what else we get in the box manual tells you about different types of coffee. Safety, we don't care about that. And the different machines they make. So I got their smallest one, it looks like. At least the smallest ones that Breville makes, I guess. I'm not sure. What else? Nothing else in the box. Let's check out the machine itself. It is extremely small. The handle is metal, that's good. Feels very premium. The buttons, they feel okay. There are two buttons here, one for a smaller cup, one for a bigger cup. Can you remove the tank? I guess you tilt back and pull, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, not the easiest to remove this. Yep, as you can see, it's completely see-through up here and then you close the lid. So yeah, I think that is where it drops out. Okay. Okay. There, there's two buttons, one for a smaller cup, one for a bigger cup. I guess you are supposed to remove that, but weird place to slap the serial number. Yes, if 
I need this, I might stick it on the bottom, perhaps. Yeah, it's on the bottom, no one can even see it. Alright, just I'm not sure what this is. I know this is where it catches the used capsules. Yeah, this looks a bit more correct. Not one big label there. And then the drip tray is here. Oh, that's how you're supposed to remove it. You're supposed to pull the entire thing out with the drip tray. Okay. And then the, the reservoir goes back here, like so. The handle just feels re like really premium. Looks really nice, yeah. It's made of metal. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Not much uh, to say about it other than that's all you get in the box. And here again are the free uh, pods that you can use. So my review will continue when I actually get to taste this, which will probably be tomorrow morning. I'll I'll film this, so hopefully, hopefully I remember. I'll have one tomorrow morning. It's getting late right now. It's like 7 p.m. Yeah, I'll get this set up in my kitchen, and um, yeah, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, at least my time. Okay, it's not tomorrow. It's still today. I was looking through this box and found a decaf one, I think. It says whatever that is. At least it says decaf half something at the bottom <clears throat> so i'm gonna try it. i did the rinsing process uh that means like get it ready for like you know rinse out the the brewer or the boiler or whatever it's called i have a cup let me rinse it first and i'm gonna make one I have these cups since my old espresso machine, so here's a new one with new everything. I have to find a new place for it, not on top of my uh, uh, K cup coffee storage. Bit large of a cup for espresso, maybe. And I'll have to support it so it doesn't fall down. So I have to find out what's the difference between this button and this button so give me a second okay according to the owner's manual uh it says number six at least on the senza mini c uh is the espresso button which will produce 40 milliliters and seven is the longo button which will produce 110. i think i want an espresso so we'll go with the this button right here Okay, loaded, first brew, waiting. There you have it. That's an espresso, 40 milliliters, and this one's supposed to be decaf. Probably unhealthy to have a coffee this late at night. No, no, I mean this this late in the day. There it is. Looks pretty good. Some crema on top. That's that foam it creates. At first, I thought, wow, it adds milk to your coffee. No, that's not cream or anything. That's crema, which is kind of like foam sort of in a way produced by the uh, pressure i have a pretty basic understanding of it but that's what it is so i'm gonna open this as you can see it dropped down there so that's where it actually goes it 
There it is. Actually, hold on. Leave that there for a second. I'm going to open it up later. Hope it's cold enough to drink now. Mmm, that's good. Good stuff. I have to say, it's pretty good tasting uh, espresso right there. Or, um, better than I could ever make it with my, um, well, because I'm not that good at this. <laughs> my I used to own a Breville Barista Express. The one with the grinder, the that uh, removable porta filter thing. It's a proper espresso machine, not a a capsule based espresso machine. Like you actually use like you have to put beans in it, you grind it, you tamp the grounds, and then you put it in the well after it's in the porta filter, you load it into the whatever that thing is called, and you press a button and water goes through it and you get espresso. This one, um, you just put a pot in there, close it, and press a button. That's easy. And it does a better job than I'll ever do. You have to understand that, like, espresso is... Tastes kind of like really concentrated coffee, like really concentrated version of what, whatever this will produce. But in other parts, it tastes completely different. It's not a normal coffee. It's not drip coffee. Um, but yeah, you can find better explanations of what espresso really is. To me, it's something completely unique. Okay, <clears throat> that rattling noise you heard earlier wasn't coming from the machine because I was, it was sit atop this thing. This, I'm sure you can see it, this metal rack. You're hearing this rattle. It's not, nothing's wrong with the machine. It seems to be doing just fine. So, done drinking that espresso. Let's, it's not hot anymore. Let's find out what's in here. Yep, totally done with it. I'll be at my kitchen sink to do that. Never mind the mess that is my kitchen sink, but here's the pod, and we're gonna check out how it works. So from what I can see, the water is injected from this side. There are three pin holes there where the water is put in, and then the espresso comes out this side. It's still sorta of hot, and you can use a spoon and, and open it. Yeah, they want you to recycle these, but this one's going to be popped open. Uh, for science. It's more like for you guys to see. So it is all aluminium. Or do you say aluminum? Uh, at least that's what I think they're made of. Kind of like a soda can, but a little bit different. And then there's some film at the bottom. I'm going to pull that out. see there looks to be some sort of film down there I think that's like uh, yeah it almost looks like a coffee filter that is like sort of in a way glued to the aluminum yep there definitely is some sort of stuff here and then there's like a plastic wrapper in there that separates the coffee from the aluminum here's the plastic wrapper Oh, it doesn't look, it's not a coffee filter, is it? Whatever, you tell me what this thing is if you've ever opened up an espresso capsule. 
And here's the coffee, very finely ground. It looks very finely ground. So that is what looks to be proper espresso coffee. I'm going to throw this away, compost it. And I've just made my <laughs> kitchen counter dirty. And I'll, I'll put that in the recycle bin. So yeah, interesting design. Good way to integrate stuff into a capsule. I'll need to clean this up later. I'm gonna try a different one tomorrow morning, so yeah, I will get back to you tomorrow morning. One that isn't a decaf. See you then. Okay, so it is the next morning. Uh, here's the machine. I moved the coffee rack, so in the K pod storage rack, so they wouldn't make those weird rattling noises. And I had a little more time to look through the selections of coffee that they give you. There it is. Okay, so I've decided to try this one first. That's the highest intensity. Right here. Probably should rinse that. So this is an espresso, so I'll press this button here. Give it some time, it's heating up, I guess. Can you see, to see that? Yeah, there it is. The light is flashing, I'm not sure what it's doing. I guess that means it's boiling or something. There it goes. There it is. It looks like more than the last one it brewed last night, you know. So you eject it, you just, and there, you open it and it drops down there. It might be too hot right now to, to give it a try, but you know, what I can see is a good amount of, uh, crema right there. There's the coffee itself and actually all of it is kind of coffee, but it's a little different. <laughs> I'm gonna try it highest intensity based on this rating scale. Uh, we'll see. Probably should have some water before I try this. So let me do that. Strangely enough, on this one specifically, there isn't that much flavor. Maybe it's because, because of me, how I taste it, or that, like, 
one of the flavors is so intense that it covers up all the others. Or kind of like is the most noticeable, you know, that you don't even notice the others. So. So it's an interesting one. After that, I'm gonna probably gonna try maybe something with less intensity, so we can so we can see a I don't know what, what should I say a contrast, hopefully. So the lowest one is either this, this, or this. Probably gonna go with this one. I'll finish this one. Yeah, I do have to say, this one isn't very flavorful. At the end, um, after you sip, it kind of has a bit of like burnt and spicy, just in a slight way that stays like an aftertaste. But not much else that I can tell. But maybe your experience will differ. All right, let me rinse this out and we'll try that one. And I'll have some more water. Okay, so I've <clears throat> had some water to uh, have it like a get rid of the old taste and uh, I'm gonna be trying this one right here it is one of the lesser intensity ones this should be more flavor oh and I refilled the water because it was running out by then so I'm gonna wait for it to boil again Okay, looked good. It's about the same amount that um, that it was last time. Maybe the first one was just because it, the first one there was less last night, but oh well. Or maybe I was seeing it wrong and I'm seeing it differently again. So there it is. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna try it. Um, how hot is this? Like, what temperature is it? Before I try it, let me check the temperature. Give me a second. Yeah, I know it, it's been given time to cool down. I should be doing this as it brews. There's this kitchen thermometer. Either it's broken or it really is at 150. So it's not bad. So maybe a little more than 150 considering uh, I've given it a slight bit of time to cool. Very precise. <clears throat> I can say about these lo lesser intensity espressos, at least again based on this scale. If that's even, a, yeah, an intensity scale, 
that these are more bitter as it as you sip it, but then less aftertaste. Uh, I can't exactly pinpoint what flavor notes, if that's what they call it, there are. Uh, so it's, so for me, the first thing I can point out is slight bitter taste as you sip. But still pretty good. Very different from the the red pod that I tried the first time. Well, the first one at least this morning. And very different from the one I tried uh, yesterday. Which was the decaf one. Which was also... Uh, actually, that one was the best. So maybe the best one I've tried so far. Maybe uh, when I shop, I'll pick something around... Which one was that? Around the 10 or 9 area. The 10 or 9 intensity. Because 13 may be too much. 4 may be too little. How much caffeine is in a... In a shot of espresso? Uh... Don't comment that, I'm gonna Google it. Um, to see if I've had too much, because <clears throat> two shots of espresso this morning. How much, like what's the equivalent to a regular cup of coffee? You know, I thought like a regular cup of coffee, like 110 or something. What is one shot of espresso? Like somewhere I read it was like 70, so times two would be 140. So maybe a little more than a cup of coffee because Generally, I drink one cup of coffee, and that's good, you know? That's all. But now that I bought this... Well, <laughs> I don't know why. It just provides such a different experience compared to this, a regular coffee machine. Because this uses such a different style of brewing. Overall, I have to say, I don't really like the far, um, any far end of the intensity spectrum by Nespresso. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the very intense ones because then there's no flavor as you sip, but then it leaves an aftertaste, at least my experience. Again, this is all my experience. You may have a different experience when you try it. Nor do I like the low end of intensity because um it it doesn't cover up the bitter flavors nor does it let out the enjoyable you know flavor that 10 that i, I the, the the decaf one which was about 10 seemed about right for me but hey that's what it's about you know trying different coffees and seeing which ones you like Some of you may be here for the caffeine. Some of you may, some of you, what I hope is here for the experience of trying different ones. And that's why I'm here. Actually, I'm kind of here for both. So there it is. Uh, my uh, first impressions of the Breville uh, Nespresso Essenza Mini. Um, instant not instant but maybe like single serve espresso machine capsule espresso machine so really good so far um i'll be trying these uh other ones over the days um over the coming days and maybe i'll follow up so yep that's it for this for this segment if i follow up so as you can see by the accumulation of these, which I'll take back to recycle one day, I've been using this quite a lot. So 
What do I think of it? It is, I have to say, better than a normal espresso machine like the one I used to have. So, oh, I don't have any more cups to make one. Uh, all right that didn't go as planned reuse the one from this morning so it's better than any regular espresso machine i don't have to wait for it to heat up i don't have to grind the beans manually uh tamp the grounds down and then uh brew the actual coffee it's much simpler you just pop this this one pot in there and then press a button Actually, press it twice because you need know, to activate it and then uh, run it. You have to wake it up and then run it. So it takes a minute to heat up to warm up. The tank is still mostly full. So, if you want a small, compact espresso machine, here's my here's the size of my hand on it. It's actually really small. Uh, this might be the right one for you. And it's pretty affordable too. It's not like 800 bucks like my old one was. It's only going to be like 190 around there. So. was I gonna say oh yeah about the pods that I'm using they're not all uh, they're not made by Nespresso although they're meant they're made for the, N the Nespresso uh, original which is the one I have I bought stuff from the, S the Starbucks branded one and the Pete's branded one uh, in fact I bought this from Costco um, all of them are Pete's it's it's already the ones I already have. I've tried them before. Uh, so I bought this for 40 bucks and it, and there are 80 capsules. So it works out to around 50 cents per capsule compared to about 90 cents per capsule on these other ones I buy in the 10 packs. Uh, so that means I save 40 cents per capsule by buying these. But it only gives you four flavors. Yeah, only four, but 80 total pods. So maybe one day when I go to the Nespresso store, I might purchase some uh, Nespresso branded coffee. So that's, I think it's a good machine. You should get it if you're looking for a compact espresso machine that's that does it quick and without much user input. So there it is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.